there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we're going to learn how to estimate or approximate the mean for a grouped frequency distribution table. Now, the emphasis is on approximate because when you are dealing with a table like this, you are not able to see the original data values. The mean that you will calculate here will only be an estimate based on the midpoints of each class times the frequency of each class. And I'm going to spend a little time explaining why that makes sense. Imagine that you are the researcher and you've collected, in this case, there are 62 data points here. And you calculate the mean, we'll just use the average function here, of the entire set of values to be 53. All right, now, if I were to sort these values and then group them into classes or bins, so I have 30 to 34 here, 35 to 39, and so on. And I just, it's as if I were taking each value and putting it into a, a bin, one by one. Okay, and if I did that, and I did do that, as you can see here, then we can see a form of a dot plot where you get to see the distribution of the values, and this looks very normal, bell curved. And if I wanted to take the mean, just to show you that it's the same data set, of all those values, I'm going to run into some problems there. Okay. Now, as the researcher, I want to report my findings, and I decide to do that with a frequency table. So as you can see, for this first class, I have one data value. For the second class, two data values, and so on. So now let's imagine that I've published that table in a paper or in an article of some kind. And now you're the reader, and all you see is this table. And you'd like to estimate the mean because it wasn't reported. So then you start looking at the frequencies in each class, and you start thinking, well, I know that there's one value between 30 and 34. There's two values between 35 and 39. If you had to guess what each of those values would be, you would use probably the midpoint. So the midpoint of the first class is 30 plus 34 quantity divided by 2, so it's the average of two values. And then if you add the class width, which we can see all the classes, if you divide, or not divide, but subtract, 35 minus 30, that's 5, 40 minus 35, that's 5. They're all a class width of 5. So if I just take the first one I calculated and add 5, and then copy that relative formula down, then I would basically be thinking I had one value that was equal to the first midpoint, 32, two values that were equal to the second midpoint, 37, five values that were equal to the 42 there, and so on. Now, calculating the mean of all those values, I get 53.1. Now remember the actual mean was 53, so that's not too bad. 
Now, how would you do this quicker than having to spread them all out and take the average? Well, repeated addition is multiplication, so we can just do the frequency times each midpoint Copy that formula down. Then we take the sum of all the products there, and that'll give us the same total as if we were to just add, I'll do it over here, all these values. Okay, see, same total there. And then you would divide by the sample size, which would be the total of all the frequencies that I have summed up right here. And so dividing that sum by the sample size, we get our estimated mean. Now the actual mean we know is 53. The difference is the actual mean minus the estimated mean. And we can see a percent difference or a percent change using the difference we have divided by the actual mean. So what we see here is 0.24% of change there. And whenever we have a percent change that's 5% or less, we consider it to be insignificant. So this is one way we can assess whether or not we've done or we have a good estimate. So if you're doing this problem, we would start by calculating each midpoint by taking the first class limit plus the second upper class limit, or I meant to say the first lower limit plus the first upper class limit, divide the quantity by two, figure out your class width by subtracting two lower class limits, 30 minus, 35 minus 30 is five, take each one, add the class width, Multiply f times x, then you'll take the sum of your frequencies, the sum of your products, And there you'll have your estimated mean by taking the total divided by the sample size. Round it accordingly.